We're live. We are live. Welcome back um, to our podcast. We still like each other. Um, this is episode two, and we highly recommend if you did not listen to episode one, go back because you're not going to understand some of the things we're going to talk about in the beginning of this episode. So my name is Stephanie. My name's Travis. And we are married, and we are going to be diving into different aspects of relationships here and there, but we're also going to just be talking about the things that interest us, things that interest us, um, things that are trending. Um, it's not going to be so focused solely on relationships all of the time, but it is going to, it's a big part of who we are and it, um, guides our thinking in a lot of things in life. So we're starting with the basics, like who we are. We aired out our dirty laundry without even realizing it. It kind of just went there. And we had recorded part two to this episode, but then we were like, uh, scratch that. Because of the overwhelming response we got for episode one, we know we had to change up the direction. The direction. The the same message, but just how we got there. Yeah, how we got there. And we have to answer some of the questions you all submitted (laughs) um, via Instagram. Because some of you finished the episode and were messaging us like, but wait, we want to know X, <laughs> Y, and Z. So we're going to answer a couple of questions, not all of them. Um, but Travis wants to do a little continuation of yesterday's story. So we did talk about, you know, the things that happened, the things I did, the messed up things I did. Mm-hmm. There was a part of the story that I added in on purpose because I was hoping you would kind of like just alley-oop. <laughs> so if you recall, I said, I rushed to her house. I get there in 30 minutes. I pull up next to a fire hydrant mm-hmm. and then I go inside. Mm-hmm. So what ended up happening is my ex did leave. And his me, car was by the hydrant. My car was by the hydrant. Um so at one point when me and you were done speaking and she had been gone for a while, mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, let me go properly park my car because, you know, I'm going to be here for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so I go outside dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and I walk up to my car and it is. So saying it's keyed <laughs> doesn't do it justice, because when you think of someone keying a car, you think someone takes their keys, they're scribbling. My or go all the way around like in the movies. My artistic ex <laughs> decided to um to write messages and draw imagery. It was it was pretty impressive looking, you know, looking yeah. back. Um I don't remember everything, but so I know on the trunk it said please eat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I don't know like if she was trying to like ass eat shame but you know you know no shame no kink shaming (laughs) here (laughs) um on the driver's side it had a pretty accurate picture of a penis whose penis (laughs) a penis okay going from the driver's side to the back seat um was the penis ejaculating if i recall I think it was exactly. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. I think the the hood of the car said, "I love tranny, tranny porn. porn," and nothing against that category of <laughs> porn. Yeah, I'm no more, kink shaming here. I'm more of a BBW kind of guy. <laughs> um, I can't remember what the last one was, but you get the you get the picture. And what's hilarious is. For the longest, a lot of his friends and family were convinced that, like, I planned it with her. Because, you know, like you all heard, we kind of were key keying that whole night. We were hanging out. So they thought I kind of gave her the alley-oop. But, yeah, go outside and mess up his car. And, honestly, I didn't. But I also don't blame her for doing yeah. it. So, in saying that, I didn't do anything. I didn't. I didn't reach out i didn't get a police report it, because she, you had done enough i didn't get a police report she literally did it right underneath a camera i didn't get the footage i didn't pursue i didn't text her like how could you yeah no i literally it was one of those moments where it's like i deserve this like that's that's all that's the Pretty only way much. i could take it and 
I knew doing anything legally was just going to drag on the situation that I wanted to be done with, clearly. That kind of reminds me of like, like when people have bad breakups and then they're like, Oh, but I need to go get my bobby pin from their house. But you don't understand. My boys to men CD is in his car. <laughs> or like I need to, uh, you know, certain when when you're done, you kind of got to let things yeah. go. Certain situations so, go. And on that day, the I mean, the a few hours before was the last time I've ever seen her, spoken to her. So that goes to one of the questions a lot of you had, like, whatever happened with the ex? Did you ever talk? Um, I know someone was like, well, you two were hanging out the whole night. So <laughs> did y'all become friends? So no, after that moment, we've never heard from her. We've never spoken to her. Um, and yeah, we kind of kind of just, that was the nail in the coffin yeah. for your relationship. And we moved on from it. And I'm, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure she has too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just, you know, it is what it is. Like, I, I hold no ill will or negative feelings. Like, literally, if anything, I'll use that story to educate. Like, I'll tell my sons, this is the type of shit that can happen to you if you're not honest with people or, yeah. you know, you do the right thing. So mm -hmm. I'm, in a weird way, happy it happened. It wasn't fun driving from the Bronx <laughs> to Brooklyn to my mechanic. And then, like, I'm sure someone has pictures of... yeah my you know my baby ever you know that um popular instagram page like what is new york yeah yeah. if yeah. that was more popular <laughs> then you probably would have ended up Definitely on that page it on <laughs> yeah it was the it was it wasn't even the walk of shame it was the drive, the drive of, of shame. shame every time you pulled up next to someone <laughs> oh man with the ejaculating time. penis on your on your driver door <laughs> please eat my ass <laughs> so the one other question that we kind of want to answer now, there were other questions more so about our proposal and keeping our relationship fresh, but we want to save that for a different Yeah, I feel like we'll, a cov different we'll podcast. cover things like that mm -hmm. throughout. But know. the one I do want to touch on is the forgiveness process. And you kind of mentioned, we talked about it yesterday, right? You want to kind of briefly summarize that before? Just basically that, you know, whatever your process was, I had to be open to it. It wasn't just going to be a one to two time conversation and then you're magically healed so mm -hmm. i had to be open to however many times however over how much time it took mm -hmm. like you said it would sometimes it would just randomly come to you and yeah. i had the, to be emotions i had to be prepared to have that conversation yeah so what i wanted to add to that was like my why you know because i'm if you know me i'm very like Fuck that nigga. Don't forgive him. I'm very like pro woman. I don't like women being disrespected. So a lot of you probably feel like this is uncharacteristic of me. Um, so I kind of want to explain a little bit like where my head at my head was at at the time. Um, so as I mentioned before, when we that first night we met, we were both in relationships. We didn't speak again for eight months at all. No contact. No meeting up, no texting, nothing. Just we followed each other on Instagram, but that's it. Um, when I wanted to get your attention again, it's because I knew my relationship was over. But what I didn't mention was my son's father was still living in my apartment. But it's it was like co-parenting. Um, we hadn't had sex in over a month. So like, you know, it's over at that point. Like, we just weren't communicating. It was very bad. Um, so I knew things were done. So when we first were talking, even those first few weeks when it was very intense, I was still in a sticky situation. So knowing the type of relationship you were in um, with your ex where it was like back and forth and, you know, you would date other girls kind of on the side at times and then get back with her. I felt like to you, you probably thought it was one of those other situations it at was just, first. It was just another another situation I'm going into when I yeah. when things are, you know, rocky. Rocky with your ex. And you weren't thinking it was going to be this huge situation. So then I felt, you know, when I found everything out, I was like, do I wish he came to the realization that he needed to admit what was going on sooner? Absolutely. But do I 
um, crucify him for making that initial decision, especially in the beginning when my baby daddy was still living in my house for it was only a couple of weeks. He moved out pretty fast after we started talking. But um, no, the one, the biggest thing for me and what has been the hardest to get over, which I feel like it's something I'll never 100% get over. It's something I'm living with in our relationship is that before I found out, I had trusted you. Like, like if someone else came to me and tried to tell me, I would have been like, no, absolutely There's not. There's no way. There's no way. Like, I, like I would have literally given my life to defend you. Like, I 100% was blindsided. Um, and I feel like there's a vulnerability in trusting someone that much, especially myself. I've never trusted anybody that much, you know, growing up in the hood when my biological father ain't shit, you know, all the Dominican men in my life ain't shit. Like I never really gave someone my trust in that way. So I always have that feeling of, I wish that was never lost. Um, it's not that I don't, you know. We've had this conversation over and over, but that's the one piece of the puzzle that I I remember and I'm like, oh, I wish I had that, you know. Without a doubt. Without a doubt with you, you know? Even though generally my philosophy is always like, anybody's capable of anything. But for a moment, I let that little guard down. Hmm. Um, so when we talk about the healing process, that's one that will come up and be like, oh. I wish I still had that feeling. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any any other loose ends? Are you ready to move on? No, I think we can move on. We're ready to move on. Yeah. All right. So the second part of our podcast that we were going to discuss was marriage and money. So on my page with the works, at with the works, which we never introduced our Instagram pages, which we should. We'll put them here. I'm going to try and do some magic <laughs> editing. Right? Let's see if we could do it here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in the post, I talked about how we were without a car for about four years, right? And it was on purpose. I got into an accident, which wasn't on purpose, obviously. But then when I had to make the this when we had to make the decision to get another vehicle or to just be like a typical New Yorker without a car for a while so we can divert that money into other things, we decided we don't need a car. Yeah, like the the biggest upside to the car accident was, you know, my insurance was going to pay out the rest of my loan, mm -hmm. my auto loan, and probably even give me a little money back. Yeah, I think we ended up even. Yeah, we ended up even, but it was just nice not to have that bill. A car on payment, yeah. So, and, you know, it was fortunate for me. I could take the train to work. You know, I worked in Brooklyn at the time. You were walking to work. You still walk to work. I still walk to work. <laughs> I'm lucky. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So, we, we kind of talked about um, how within those almost four years, we became credit card debt free. Um, we started contributing to retirement. We finally started Eli's College Fund. So we kind of wanted to just talk about marriage and money because, again, of all the things in our marriage that have been difficult, it's probably before our marriage that hiccup, sir, <laughs> <laughs> money. And this might be another one or two things, which we'll save for other episodes. But money is, is, is so taboo in our culture um, our friends don't know how much money we make. Our friends don't know what we can afford. We're agreeing to go to dinners and go to on trips we can't afford because we don't know how to talk to our friends about money. So money's this big taboo topic. So how did money impact our marriage? Um, in the beginning, it was, you know, just swipe, swipe, swipey. Like I didn't really have a grasp or I didn't have a clear vision for where I wanted money to take our lives. Mm -hmm. It was more so like in the moment, lack of a better term, YOLO. Yeah, we weren't planning for the future. Like I had, you know, we had a son, we have a son, and it wasn't thinking about his future at all. It was more so what's going to make us happy now? now. What's going to make him happy right now? Mm -hmm. And eventually it, 
I don't I don't think we hit a wall. It was more so like we opened our eyes, I think. Or yeah. well you can So basically one thing that was happening was we were paying our rent late every single month. We yep. never let months add up, but if rent was due on the first, we, we had like to wait 15th. to the fifteenth paycheck to complete the amount of rent we owed, right? Um another wake up call was um I only had like two credit cards at the time. But one of them had a $5,000 limit and it was almost always almost at the limit. And I would pay a few hundred bucks, but then use a few hundred bucks. Then I don't know when I decided to look at it. I realized like if I had made a $300 payment, only 150 actually went towards the balance. So while I'm swiping, I'm paying a tax on everything I buy. You know, even if I'm like, oh, this is on sale. Um, It's not really on sale because I'm paying credit card interest yeah. on it. So those were like the two things that we were like, all right, what the hell? We're doing something wrong. Or we need for, to figure this out. For me personally, what sucked a lot of the times was anyone who knows me knows one of my interests are sneakers. Mm -hmm. So I buy these highly sought after sneakers. Sometimes, you know, I'll get them at retail, let's say 150 to 200 but since they're so highly sought after, the, the after sale market or the resale market is five times that much. You know, mm -hmm. I've had sneakers I could sell for a thousand dollars and then we maybe be late on rent. And I'm like, got to got to got to sell the sneaker. He's, he's oversimplifying it. OK, tell, tell, tell the wrong. Not that you're <laughs> simplifying it, but I feel like you didn't easily decide I'm going to sell my sneakers always. It was a tougher conversation and like sometimes it was an, not an argument because you don't really so, argue with me. So, I okay, so I do know what you're talking about. You, they, the art, the, the conversation, <laughs> not <laughs> yeah, the argument, not the argument. The conversation would be, I wish this wasn't a conversation. Yes. It would be like, we need money. You have the means or you have the, I guess the means. The to, shoe, you have this shoe that's, let's say a thousand dollars, worth a thousand dollars in your house. Why is the rent paid late if you have this object? No. And it's you know? not that I use $1,000 to obtain no. the shoe. It's the fact that... It's worth a dollars It's a worth $1,000. So I could easily get that money, get the money. Help us get back on... Not, you know, help us get back on track a little. Mm -hmm. And the conversations <laughs> that would happen would be like, why, why wouldn't this just be like the immediate thought? Like, why do I have to make you realize that you have this $1,000 sitting in the closet? Like, and then, you know, as a woman, you know, we have that, that worry that we're naggers or we're making men do things they don't want to do. Right. So it's like, you wish they would just do it. Kind of like the flowers. Like, I don't want to tell you to buy me flowers. I just want you to buy me flowers yeah, yeah, yeah. so that we would have that discussion. Like, why do I have to bring that to your attention? Which also reminds me of how bad our spending issue was because there were several sneakers that you did sell. We're talking about the ones you decided to keep for yourself because mm. you also had a little side hustle where you were buying sneakers with the intention to sell them. Yeah. So, but and it was, we were still in a hole. It was just catch up. It was literally. It was just catch up. Let's say I had a good sale or maybe got five shoes, made, I don't know, 2,000 bucks. It never profit, felt like extra money. And it always was just. Oh, we owe this bill. Exactly. It never just set in our checking account. And it was just Or it profit. was never like, oh, we can have a nice trip. Yeah. Or we could save this here. It was always like, oh, thank God, because we're so behind. Um, I also was waitressing on top of my job at a school. So before I was a teacher, I was a power professional. So I didn't make as much money. So I always supplemented my income. If you all know me, I'm a workaholic. But then it's like I'm working Saturdays and Sundays nights. So I have less time for my husband. I have less time for my son. And the money, we're, we're spending it so poorly that it makes no sense. I'm like, we could afford for me not to have the second job if we spent our money better. It's funny. Um, just jumping ahead a little. Like, we, I think she was joking slash serious. But when she was finally done with her master's and only was working one job, she jokingly said, like, I wonder, I hope you're still going to like me because we have never spent this, this much, much time, time together, together we because were always so busy. there's always, she always had one, two jobs, school, sometimes three jobs. So, and then it was funny. Then we got thrown into quarantine. So it was like, and all right, we were let's together forever. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and but, we're like, all right, so we really like yeah, each we other. Yeah, we do like each other. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then we we said, okay, the we looked at all of our debt. That was like the big moment, right? Yeah. Travis always says this. Whenever he talks to anyone about money, he says, write it all down and look at it. Face it. I'm not talking about on your phone. I'm talking about take a piece of a paper. A piece of paper, right? Write it down. Yeah. Write the name of the... the, the Credit cards, the loan, the banker. And the total. That not, number? That number is can be... It, it can take your breath away. And we got to remember, that includes... A car payment, if you owe money on a car, includes student loans. It includes credit cards. It includes your iPhone that you're paying an extra forty dollars a month to to your to your cell phone provider because you you know you had to get the latest phone. All of those things add up, right? So when you really look at how much money you owe other people and how much corporations are profiting off you just needing to have shit that you can't afford. You're like, nah, something's got to change. But <laughs> it still wasn't that easy, right? It wasn't that easy. Like, we had that moment. It was still shocking. It was shocking. But I think we still... It was hard. Like we said, it's money so taboo. We still had trouble saying no to certain outings. We still... Or we would know, justify things. Justify buying things or like, oh, no, I could buy, I could sell this. Or, and you would anticipate shoe purchases before the shoes drop, not knowing how many you would get. Um, we would, you know, it would seem we'll, we'll pay, we'll pay off like $5,000 and then I'm not really paying attention. And then when I go back and check, we added, we like, added another 4,000. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It was, and that led to some of our biggest conversations. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm never going to call them I, arguments. Honestly, though, those were probably arguments. Like, I feel like we had moments of, like, what are we doing? Um, and I feel like a big part of it was that I used to feel that it wouldn't come up. Like, remember how I said I wouldn't be paying attention? And then I would notice. Yeah. And you, I, would be, and you would kind of be in the background like, well, yeah, we were kind of spending and you didn't say anything. So like truthfully, it was it was I, I don't see her as a mother, but it was like not wanting to tell your parents something like <laughs> it was like, hope she don't know this. Or, or in my head, sometimes I would like, All right, I'm going to sell something and then she'll never even she'll notice, notice the balance. And it, it, it was just it was unhealthy. It, it was super unhealthy. And it didn't happen once. It happened a couple of times. Like there were times when I would say, "Fuck this! I'm t I'm gonna have my money. You have your money, and we'll figure because, it out." Because pretty early on, what we didn't mention is that we decided we're gonna pull our incomes. We're yeah. gonna whatever bills we have. It's now together. it's our bill. And you can see we literally got engaged eight months after we started dating and married within the year. So our incomes were combined pretty fast, pretty early. Um, that's one thing like I don't um, I have high expectations when it comes to money and men. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, it was it was tough. And then our saving grace. Ah. <laughs> I, I hope I can get the editing down because I would love to just be like. <laughs> <laughs> so we found Brittany Polanco on Instagram. At Britt Polanco. At Britt Polanco. She was also known as, according to my calculation, at one point. And why is Britney so important in our journey? And why did it finally... I don't even think she, I don't even think she understands understand, how important she is yeah. to us and yeah, everything we do. So I accredit it to representation. Yeah. She was married, a young married, young married couple. She went to my high school. She was actually a couple of years younger than me. So we were never like friends in high school, but that's how I found her. Like someone from high school shared her page and she kind of had the same moment we had. Like, what the fuck? Like looking at all the debt. Um, I think she had saved up money to go on a trip to Europe. I think maybe Italy. And then she decided, you know what? Instead of spending this money on the trip, I'm going to throw it at my debt. I'm tired of being crippled to the debt. And um, that reminds me of like one of my reasons, too, is like we will go on a trip and I would be having a great time for a week. 
But then I'm stressing paying off the trip for three months. And it's like, is it worth it? If yeah. it caused me three months of stress. Um, Travis is a great gift giver. My birthdays, Christmas, thoughtful. He's just great. Great at planning dates. But then sometimes I'll be sitting in a date just like, I wonder how much he paid for this shit. <laughs> like we on this helicopter, but uh, how much, how was, much it? was this shit? Hey, <laughs> so it's like the things that were bringing us joy. Yeah were actually bringing us more stress in the long run, right? It was like that moment of gratification was short-lived, yeah. you know? So that was one of the other reasons. So when we found Brittany, um, she introduced us to this method of paying off debt and budgeting. And um, I don't believe she made them up. I believe like she, you know, fought, there's a whole debt-free community out there. Um, so... Um, you can find them on Instagram. Well, I'll mention a couple, but literally you can look up the hashtag debt free community and you'll find a bunch of people. Um, so she basically was doing the debt snowball. So all of your credit cards, let's say you have you owe 10 different banks or so 10 different credit cards. You start with the smallest and pay it off to zero and everything else. You only pay the minimum. Then when you finish with the first card. You move on to the second card. You pay the minimum on all the other ones, but that smallest one you have, you're attacking it, paying as much money as you can. And it's just, see, so, you know, I never, like, this is more so her realm as far as, like, the research, but I just think the idea is you seeing something hit a zero, a zero balance. zero, it's, and it's motivating. It's exciting. It's exciting. And, you know, I don't know if you were going to touch on it, but what helped get me on board early on was... I don't know if it was coincidence or I just happened to have a few cards that were lower balance, but I almost feel like you purposely attacked. We paid off your cards first. Just, and I don't know if you did it on purpose, but it kind of helped get me on board because now I'm excited. I did it because of the snowball. Okay. But, but then now in hindsight, it helped you kind of get motivated into like, oh, I have no debt. Like his credit card, his credit score skyrocketed before mine did. Um, and it just worked out that way. There's an opposite way to do it, which is the avalanche method is the opposite. You start with the biggest credit card, which saves you more money in the end because the biggest one you owe has the most interest collecting, but the other one works to get you motivated. So it just depends on the type of person that yeah, you like are. Whatever mindset you, you're you, in at the you're moment. You're in at the moment. Um, and the other concept that she introduced us to was um, the zero-based budget. So what does that mean? You figure out how much money you make and you tell your money what it's going to do every month instead of you saying, oh, just we're swiping. I'm going here. No, you say I'm making, let's say I'm just making these numbers up $2,000. What are these $2,000 going to do in this month? X, the your, first is your essentials, your rent, your food, um, things you have to pay, like your transportation, your electric bill. Then the rest is, okay, this is what I have, and I'm either going to blow it on bullshit or brunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be intentional with my money. Yeah. I'm going to say, okay, I can put this amount to this credit card and I could pay it off in six months. Or, um, But then you also have to be realistic, which is what I loved about Britney too. They also had a non-essential budget. Yeah, for the fun things for the fun things for the occasional beer pizza takeout but they had a budget so they weren't just on a whim deciding they were having pizza it had to fit within the budget um so that's what they were doing for a long time and it motivated us because it made sense um it was people that looked like us were from where we are from you know they're not making millions of dollars a year they're just being intentional right um and when you calculate it you can see the end point you're like if i do this budget for 10 months for 12 months oh my god we could be here we yeah. could be here you might you might miss a few events but yep. what's what's important to you at the end of the day yep like i was the type that if someone invited me out i say oh i can't make it we should hang out at my house i love hosting even before budgeting, I'm a host at heart. Like, I love having people over. I love cooking for people. It's way cheaper. 
You tell people to bring dishes. It's way better. Or tell them what we did with family in regards to like Christmas. Christmas. Oh, those first couple of years, we were like, we're not buying gifts for anyone. Like no, no niece, nephews. Like it's on chill. But in return, please do not do buy not our son. Do not buy our son anything. Like please, he doesn't need anything. And we bought Eli Christmas gifts, but we didn't fill the tree with things which we don't like to do anyway because we don't want him to be entitled and spoiled like he works really hard and he deserves things but we keep it where it's not excessive you know and he's happy with inexpensive things and it's you know like that that thing that happens all the time like you buy your kid like a super expensive toy and then they end up playing with the wrapping paper the most like yep, that Eli's Eli. that kid yep he's probably still kind of like eventually that kid. <laughs> got him a nintendo switch and that same year, we got him like these little slime things from the Ryan's Switch toys. Collected dust. He just recently started playing with the Switch. So, yeah, so it's those types of things like telling people no to Christmas gifts. Um, but then, if, you, if you're in the community and let's say Christmas is important to you, that's a tradition. Your family is invested in it. Like, that's just something you cannot do. You feel like you're going to fail. That's where your budget comes in. Yeah. If you start your budget in March and you know Christmas is so important to you, you start saving for Christmas from March. So you're not putting Christmas on credit cards, you know? You decide, okay, I have to buy this many gifts. I have, you know, I'm going to spend, let's say, about $3,000. So from March to December, you're saving that aside and not all at once in Christmas. So... A budget isn't limiting. It's just about controlling how you spend. You can't be swipe, swipe, swiping. <laughs> exactly. Swiper, no swiping. And just to be clear, if it wasn't already, it wasn't like we found this resource and then we immediately got it together. Yeah. We fell a f yeah. numerous times. We fell a few times. So do you want to like just explain where we are now? Yeah. So in this process... um. Throughout these years, we we basically became credit card debt free, um, but then I in I had went back to get my master's degree. Yeah. So that was when we were like, oh my god, are we gonna get another forty thousand dollars in student loans? And we calculated our budget, and we said, you know what? If we're really very tight, our non essential budget is kept low. We could pay for school. We won't pay off our credit cards and we won't be able to save a lot in time. So this, this is time. before we got credit card debt free, right? Yes. It was yeah. before we got credit card debt free, but it was lowered a lot at this point. Yeah. And we didn't have much of a savings. We had like a small emergency fund, but we didn't have like a fully funded six month emergency fund or anything like that. And we were like, I had signed up for school. I had got all the paperwork for loans and then I canceled it last minute. I said, nope, we're going to just pay for school. And we made it work. We used to be tight. You would have to sell sneakers. You would have to find stuff. Like, I was still waitressing. But every month, they got paid. And in 18 months, I was done with my master's program, which means we paid about $40,000 in tuition. And I, I, like, it's only once you're, old, you're done with something that you look back, you're like, holy How shit. Did, like, we probably, it will probably be so hard. So that's another place where we are. We're at a place where we don't have credit card debt. Um, we are contributing significantly to our retirement. I contribute about 13%. I think you do about a six because that's what your job matches or something like that. And you make more money than me. So it kind of balances. Um, we're contributing the max amount that we can per year to Eli's um, college fund. So we're doing way, way better. But our struggle still is saving. just saving just cash on hand. Um, we'll save like a little and then we'll make a big purchase. So like, for example, if you follow us on Instagram, you know, we got a brand new couch. We don't finance it. Um, we paid it up front because, again, we don't like owing people. We don't like interest. We don't like having payments. Um, we got a Peloton. Again, we just bought it out cash because we don't like having payments. We don't like owing people. We you know, that's our model so, moving forward. So now we're at the point where I basically sit down one to three times a week. Now it's like the roles are reversed. He's on the budget. 
Yeah. So I sit down, we have an Excel sheet and I update like, you know, I have all our cards. I'll log into everything, update everything, see what the due dates are, make sure we're paying everything off at the right time. Because, you know, we still use our credit cards because credit cards aren't this evil thing. You they can you can use them to work to for you. Advantage, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm on top of it. So the idea of adding something else to that list would make me like just yeah. die a little inside. So if we want to make a big purchase. We make sure we have the money first. Yeah. So the Peloton was paid off. The mm-hmm. Peloton was purchased right out the mm-hmm. couch. We bought a new TV like every like just things to make our home more comfortable more comfortable but that means we're not saving as exactly. much and we try to give ourselves grace because had we continued to live like we were living 4 years ago we'd probably have $80,000 in debt yeah. $100,000 in debt especially if our life cuz our lifestyle has also increased in the past 4 years like we we moved to more expensive places um but um one last point i want to make I don't want you all to feel like, well, it's because they have a two income household. They could do this. Um, Oh, it's because, you know, they make a ton of money. We don't make a ton of money. Um, We're not going to say exactly what we make, but we both got stimulus checks, full stimulus checks. Put that into perspective. Put that into perspective. There was a cap on who could get stimulus checks. We got them. So we don't make that much money. And even with my side hustle, it's still not yeah exactly um i just started my tutoring business that does okay for me but again we've been we bought a peloton we bought a couch that's the reason we've been able to make these purchases and upgrade our apartment um another thing is if you go if you're trying to find someone with a lifestyle closer to you making it work you can remember i said britney was our moment because we had similar lifestyles Young, married, two-income household. There are other people, single, single teachers, single mothers. Um, it, you just have to find the person that relates to you in the community to, to feel represented, you know? Um, and don't um, doubt yourself. That doesn't mean... There's also... Remember, we were talking about you could just have an income crisis, I do not doubt that there are some people who literally just don't make enough, just don't make enough just to, you know, they're buying literally groceries on credit cards. And that's a whole different story. And we know a lot plays into that race, gender, education, family history. So if that's the case for you, don't um, beat yourself up about it. Um, But seek help through social media, Mm -hmm. like social media could be the devil if you let it but it could be so beneficial so helpful um anything you want to say about like social media and money it's tough because like i've said before i love like streetwear i love sneakers so i have to be mindful of how much or how many pages i'm following that are just constantly feeding me this these images of things that i may or may not need or may not be able to afford at the time and now, now, I can say now that I'm in a place where it doesn't matter how many things I follow because it doesn't affect me. But Travis, three to four years ago, was very affected by those things. Even having friends who made certain purchases without thinking, and I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses, you know, for lack of a better term. Um, so, but focusing on social media, just be mindful of the things that you're ingesting, mm-hmm. just like food. You know, you're not just going to eat candy and drink soda all day. Mm -hmm. Same thing with social media. Be mindful of the things you're reading all day. We spend a lot of time on our phone. So it doesn't have to be like this negative thing. Mm -hmm. It can it can be positive. Yeah. Like, we know, we can't compare ourselves to celebrities. Like, I love Kim Kardashian. I love Cardi B. But I'm not trying to dress like them or travel like them. They're millionaires. Because they make millions of dollars. And a lot of these celebrities get free shit. Like, you know, for exposure. Um, and it may not be that easy to understand that. And and that doesn't mean that you still don't have those moments of like, fuck, I wish I could do that. Mm-hmm. Like, how can I make some millions? Like, I'm about to play lotto. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I don't have those moments. But you still have to be a little bit more realistic and be like, hold up, pump the brakes, and let's... 
what do I have? We got to be a little grateful sometimes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I think that pretty much covers like our money and marriage. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, it's not going to be the last time we discuss these yeah. type of things. It may be the last time we go into depth, but it's going to come up. Like it's just a part of our lives. It's a part of your lives. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about these things a lot, a lot. Yeah. as we go over different topics. So, yeah. So um, we are actually, since we got such a great response for our first episode, we kind of want to hear your dirty laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and I know um, you're not trying to have a podcast and put your business out there. So if you want to share your story for us to share anonymously, that'll be awesome. We're actually going to put a post for anonymous submissions. Um, that'll be great. And then maybe we could do a follow up one about um, relationships and money yeah. and how maybe money has impacted um, your relationships. Um, Cause I feel like we kind of want to include our audience and our audience experiences because I feel like so many people reached out like, Oh my God, that reminds me of me or, Oh my God, I, I would have never thought you all were going through that. So if we could share even more stories on our platform, I think that'll be, um, you know, ideal to like, help the community like see different perspectives and feel represented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any last comments? So I always want to end these things with, you know, the, the title of the podcast is we still like each other. So uh -huh. do you still like me? Or I still like you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Love you. Peace. Bye. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm.